make a quick video for you um, to give you an insight into palm reading or palmistry and how to go about doing a palm reading yourself really. So when I do a palm reading for people usually it's because they have a question or they want to find out more about themselves or they want to discover um, something about their past, present and future. And palm reading is something that's been used for centuries. It's a very old technique um, and it is a very accurate and reliable tool. So there's a number of things to look at in the hand and it's, I'm going to go into why it's so accurate but um, this video really is going to focus about the first thing that I do when I look at a, a client's hand and the first things I do to get in touch with what's going on with them. So to explain that I just need to go a little bit into the astrology of things and that's why on the hand picture that I've put up here there's the name the, the, the names of the different planets on parts of the hand. And the way this works is, um, if you're familiar with astrology at all, when we're born we each um, we can we can draw up a natal chart for ourselves. That that's basically the position of the planets when you were born. Okay. So at the moment when you take your first breath, all you know the sun, the moon, and the eight planets, they're all in certain places in in the solar system. And it's like a snapshot, okay, when you take that first breath. And I think it was Carl Jung who said that um, um, every moment has a significant and specific quality to it. And the moment when you're born, the constellation of the planet will create a certain energy, a vibration, a, a personality and an um, interconnectedness and relationship between the planets that's going to affect you as a person. Now, we can go even deeper into this and say, you know, if you think about the Course in Miracles, it, it kind of states that this reality, this world, is an illusion, uh, which is, you know, a belief that I share, and that strengthens this significance of, of astrology. If the world is an illusion, and it's all down to um, kind of, um, sort of, circumstantial factors, then astrology is really important because it will indicate your role and your type of personality in that illusion. So it, it would be really um, just kind of, um, sorry I'm not explaining this very well, but it wouldn't be you know, it'd be a little bit lazy to ignore that significance because um, it offers you a real insight into who you are. And if you know who you are, then you can actually plan for your life, you can see what your purpose is, and you can move forward. Now, what's all this got to do with uh, palm reading? Okay, the way the body works is that um, our personality and everything is stored obviously in our brain. Okay, and in terms of the physical body, the brain actually expresses its kind of patterns. So if you think of the synapses and all the nerve cells and things in your brain and how they look and interact, that kind of um, constellation, so if you think of you know the universe, the, the solar system is the external constellation and your brain is the internal constellation, the brain actually expresses that in the palm of your hands. So you know via the nervous system and all of that, it it um, it's like an imprint on your hands that gives you an idea of how your brain works. So we've gone from your personality as a snapshot in terms of the universe outside of yourself. That snapshot then transfers into you in your body in terms of your brain and then that's kind of illustrated for you in the palms of your hands. So it's a really, it's like a one, two, three step process of looking at yourself and then we can reverse that process and start with the hands and then we get all the information that's um, that goes into making you who you are okay so it's a really um, I mean it's a great way of looking at things because it's right then that you carry this blueprint around with you in your hands every day so that's enough about the history. In terms of the actual hand itself, I'm going to just draw your attention to the actual picture. There's a couple of things there. So the first thing I look at with the hand is uh, which hand I'm going to use. So um, 
To me, I, I do take into account whether a person is left or right handed because obviously that's their dominant hand. So I will first of all look at using their dominant hand. The dominant hand is first of all um, more insightful about who that person is on the inside and the other hand is about the kind of image they portray of themselves. So personally I'm left-handed so if someone was going to read me um, they would use my left hand and then they would compare that with the right hand and see how I as an inward person correspond with what I put out there in the real world. So that's the first thing you need to be aware of. Now once you start reading the dominant hand the thing I look at is these kind of planets. And on this picture it shows Venus, Moon, Lower Mars and all of that. And when you're looking at the hand very simply and easily, all you do is you look at the surface of the hand, of the palm. And you look at areas that are really elevated and um, higher than, than the others. So for instance, when I look at my palm, where it says under the, th the ring finger, where it says sun, that part of my hand is really... Um, not elevated, whereas the other three are much higher. Okay, so that's interesting, and that's something I would take note of, and then I would look at that. So, in terms of, um, let's look at the palm area first. So we've got Venus. The Venus, the Venus planet refers to beauty. It refers to uh, the female principle. It refers to. Um, you know, the, the female sexuality, physical health and physical beauty and harmony. If that's elevated, and this applies to any of these kind of areas, if that's really elevated, then we've got an abundance of those qualities. So we've got good health, um, good sex drive, all of those things. The next thing I want to look at is the moon. The moon is about what makes us feel nurtured. It's about um, connecting to the, the collective unconscious. So the, the kind of space of humanity where we're all interconnected and where we know everything. It's also um, uh, that part of the body and the mind that doesn't act is that is more receptive and that's really about taking in information and receiving and more the feminine aspect of our personality. Again, if that's raised, we've got a really high aptitude for that. Now, moving up, we've got Lower Mars, Mars area, and Upper Mars. Mars is the um, archetypal male planet. It's about um, the force we put out in the world, about our drive, our ambition, uh, levels of aggression, loyalty, uh, kind of energy, willpower, drive, all of those things. Um, the Lower Mars area has to do with your physical kind of energy. Mars area has to do with your will and how you come across in the world. And the upper Mars is how you um, expand your mind, your knowledge, your, your intuition, all of those things. So again, look at the level of um, kind of, rather than just say elevated areas, if, a, if the hand is more fleshy or it's um, there's anything significant about those areas, so if it's redder than the other parts of the hand, or if there are a lot more creases, or if there's um, um, a, you know, a feeling that you get about it when you move your hand over it, or when you look at it, that, take that into account, because that will be significant. Next, we look at the area under the index finger, which is Jupiter. That has to do with expansion new things coming in, um, creativity, um, abundance, prosperity. Jupiter is the, the planet of limitless flow and expansion and ever-growingness and getting bigger. So if that is um, heightened, then the person you're reading for is going to have a real thirst for knowledge. It's going to be a real doer, a real go-getter. And also it has to do with luck. So this would be a good one to kind of be drawn to because it would be a very um, fortuitous indicator. It's also um, about how that person expresses themselves, whether they're extroverted, introverted, and the higher that's raised, the more extroverted and expansive that person is. Okay, moving on to the next one is Saturn. That's the um, planet that has to do with structure, limitation, 
strength, groundedness, all of those things. Again, if it's raised, that person has a really strong sense of responsibility. The super ego, you know, that part of us that's like a parent that tells us what to do and what we can't do, that would be really raised. So it's important to notice that. Now, the next bit is the sun, the one that I didn't have really raised in on my own hand. And the sun is our own sense of self. So if you think about astrology again, your sun sign is going to be a really significant part of your personality. That's the part they always publish in newspapers and in magazines. That all goes on your sun sign. So that's how you express your willpower, your drive, and that's how you see yourself. Okay? If that's if that's heightened, there's a real strong sense of self, a real um, kind of lack of questioning because there's because that's replaced with knowing knowingness and if it's decreased then there's more um, yeah there's a weaker sense of self there's less searching less less um, sorry less knowing more exploration and all of those things the next one we've got is mercury mercury is the planet of communication um, technology, um, speaking, writing, any times of interaction with other people is ruled by Mercury. So if we've got that heightened, the person is a talker, someone who's um, who makes sense of information, deals with information, and connects with other people in a good way. Now, we've got a repetition of those planets in the fingers. The index finger is Jupiter, so the sense of self and the expansiveness. Saturn is... Um, that finger relates to how we respond to the external world. So Saturn is how the external world limits us. Ring finger is again our own creativity, our own self-expression, and that's the sun again. And then Mercury, the index finger, is really about um, is like an antenna. It's what we pick up, how we communicate. It's all about information. So Mercury rules that finger. Now, if I can just draw your attention to the next picture, which, um, as you can see, there has been um, put together by Anne Massey. This has to do, uh, same thing, it's got the planets there, but it's got more of a, it, it's labeled, first of all, and it's more in-depth, okay? So, let's go back to, um, actually, let's start with... Um, the thumb, because the other, the other diagram didn't look at the thumb. So uh, the ASC there, it's, that's the Ascendant. If you look at your horoscope chart, the Ascendant is the thing that was just coming over the horizon when you were born. So that, if you look online what your Ascendant is, it'll be a different sign than your Sun sign. And that's going to be the qualities that you project to the outside world. Okay. So the thumb has to do with the willpower and it has to do with logic. So it's how you... Um, express your inner personality in connectedness with the outside world. It's ruled by Venus again, which moves down into the kind of fleshy area of the thumb there, and that has to do again with vitality and sensuality. Uh, moving over to the moon area, we've covered that, that's intuition and sensitivity. Then we've got Mars again, that's physical courage, strength, aggression. Yep, moral courage and strength, we had that, that's fine. And then we've got those, um, just at the base of each one of the fingers, those planets. Okay, we've looked at those. What's interesting here, and what I want to have a look at, is that each section of the finger has been separated into um, a different... Um, sign of the zodiac. Okay, so let's look at the index finger first. That is ruled by Jupiter, which is the uh, planet of new things, expansion, um, and which is a great thing to rule the index finger, which has to do with our. Um, it's like a mirror. It's how we see ourselves. So it's a, it has to do with our sense of self identity, which is always growing and always expanding as we move through this life. So at the base of that is Gemini, which that sign has to do with, it's the, it's the twins. So it has to do with communication and being really um, in your head. It's an air sign. So it's all about kind of making sense of information. So if you think about your path through life, the way you're going to 
discover who you are is by looking at the information that you get about you. So first it's how you know how you learn to speak, how you interact with other people, the way you look, the, the kind of feedback you get from other people. That's going to be the basis of how you decide who you are. Then we move up and we've got Taurus and Taurus is the sign, it's an earth sign that has to do all, of, all with the physical world, it has to do with possessions, with money, with our body, with our hunger, with our desires, all of those things. And that's the second thing. So it's our placement in the world, how we interact, how we manage. Are we capable? Do we um, succeed in work, in, in, in creating money for ourselves? Are we able to take care of ourselves? Those things are gonna those things are gonna color the way you see yourself too. And then at the tip of the finger we've got Aries, and that's a fire sign, and that has to do, it's the first sign of the zodiac, and that has to do with fire and drive and pushing our will forward. And that's how much you can affect life. So um, it's how much of an impact you can make on your environment, on your world. And obviously that's going to have a huge sense of how you perceive yourself. If you feel like um, you, you can absolutely get what you want and make anything happen that you want, you're going to feel much more empowered and um, self-fulfilled. So that's really important. And again, each of those areas, if they're kind of heightened or if there's anything significant that strikes you when you look at those, then take note of that because it will be important and it will give you insight into the person you're reading for. The next one um, is the middle finger. So this is how we um, this is how we interact with the world that we come across. So um, whereas the thumb is how we express our willpower, the middle finger is more how we react to the world. So that's our kind of response to the world. At the base is Pisces, which is all about the imagination and dreaming. So that's how we imagine things to be. That's the base of our um, interaction with our external environment, how we would like it to be. So that really shapes our foundation. So if we go out the front door in the morning and think, right, I'm going to really have a fight with someone today, it's very likely that that's going to happen. Okay. If you walk out the front door in the morning and you say, all my interactions and all my speech is going to be very um, harmonious and sensual and it's really going to create beauty in my world and in my life, then that's, you know, when you've got that intention, it's very likely that that's going to happen. So that forms the basis. Next, moving up, we've got Aquarius, another air sign, and that has to do with um, um, social interaction, being a leader, being gregarious, you know, being sociable, having fun with friends, being outgoing, all of those things. So the way we approach other people and whether our kind of approach is positive or negative is going to have an impact on how our environment sees us and how the environment acts in response to us. Finally, we've got Capricorn at the top. And this is, Capricorn is an earth sign and it's the sign that has to do with efficiency, hard work, discipline, self-sacrifice, um, and it's, it's really the worker of the zodiac. It, it works really well with Saturn, who's the limiter of the zodiac, and who's the structure. And what this means is, you know, as a, as a single person, we've got so much power to, to create our life the way we want to. But what we do come across is we come, when we're born, we come into a world that's shaped. And that, you know, we come into this planet uninvited. No one asked us to be here and make a difference. We come here and we have to make our own path. We have to kind of make our own voices heard. And it's interesting that we've got Capricorn at the tip there, which actually is the thing that connects with the external world, because it means that we have to work hard and we have to be efficient and we have to be disciplined to get ourselves noticed and get ourselves heard. So again, look at, you know, particularly um, eye-catching qualities, factors, and then if it is eye-catching, then you can focus in on that area and mention it. Let's look at the third finger, the ring finger, and that has to do with self-expression, um, our creativity, our passions, our drives, and it's ruled by the sun, and the sun 
obviously is where we get our warmth from, where we get our life from. If you know, it's like life on Earth is being the, the the sun is like the torch in the sky that shines a light on us, and that makes all of this possible. If there was no sun, nothing would be going on here. Okay, so it's important that our own sense of self and creativity is ruled by the sun because. If we have no personality, nothing's going to happen. We'll just be, um, we'd just be a body, we'd be a robot, uh, nothing would be going on. So it's our soul, it's our spirit that really informs this physical incarnation, and that's really important in moving things forward. It's ruled by, at the base of it, excuse me, is the sign of Virgo, which has to do with service, and it has to do with daily routine, and it has to do with um, kind of, physical health and habitual patterns. So to express ourselves we have to start to get to know ourselves in a really mundane everyday t kind of way that helps us to um, that gives us the foundation to actually be able to express things. If we don't do that we don't know ourselves we can't express it. Next we move on to Leo and Leo is the sign of the zodiac that's actually ruled by the Sun and Leo is um, the time of the year that we're in now, so in August, and that has to do with just being confident and expressing ourselves and being um, a leader and powerful and all those wonderful things like, you know, actors are always thought of the profession to go with Leo. And it, who's someone, someone who's extroverted and confident and outgoing. So that's an important part of our self-expression. If we're shy and retiring, people won't um, see who we are because we don't actually demonstrate it in any way. And finally, we've got cancer at the top there. That's the part of the finger that actually connects with the external world. That has to do with feelings, and it has to do with family, and it has to do with um, our background and how we feel about ourselves and our place in the world. So it's our background and it's our um, sense of self that really shapes who we are and how we express ourselves and that's just a you know that's just a that that adds flavor to who we are because it it kind of um, makes us a more of a niche audience so if you're from um, you know H Hawaii you're going to express your joy and your bliss in a different way than someone who would do it from South Africa it doesn't mean that the feelings are any different it's just the way of expressing my be a little bit varied. Finally we've got the uh, little finger which is the antenna and has to do with the information we pick up and that's Mercury. Mercury is the planet of communication and at the base of the finger we've got Sagittarius there in blue and Sagittarius is the the centaur, the, um, the man with the um, it's the man who's the, the top half of his body is a, is a man and the bottom half is a is the body of a horse and he's really the um, archer the explorer and um, Sagittarius has to do with higher learning and exploration and really philosophy and all those things that expand our knowledge so to communicate we need to be able to take in information if we want to communicate something so that's a really important part of that so it's being open and receptive to different ways of doing things. It's, it's um, the foundation of expressing ourselves is really learning how to do that and learning from other people. Next, we move into Scorpio, and Scorpio has to do with um, transformation and sex and death and secrets and manipulation, and it's it's the really um, not the surface stuff, it's the deeper stuff, and it's the stuff that can get a bit darker, okay? So it's this means that it's a, it's a real exploration of life to communicate things in a meaningful way. We have to have our own experiences which we can learn from and then really pass on. If we haven't experienced it and we just hear about things, it's, very, it's not going to be as passionate and emotionally charged as if we actually experience something and we pass that knowledge on to someone else. So it's, a Scorpio is an important part of experience. At the top there, the part that connects us with the real world, that's Libra in red, and that's an air sign that has to do with uh, communication again. Air communication, all of that. And that's fitting because if we want to communicate and if we want to be heard, Libra has to do with creating harmony and being artistic and looking for 
um, beauty in things. And really, if you want to communicate in an effective way, you're going to have to um, formulate that so other people will be able to understand it and hear it and be able to listen to it. So, for instance, if you're uh, you know, using foul language, people aren't going to be as likely to to uh, want to communicate with you and it's about honing your own sense of communication and how you can do that in the best way. So I know that's a lot of information but um, literally I'm giving you a lot of information here but when you're actually doing a, a reading on a palm you would just glance at this palm and look at any significant spots that are raised or, or um, you know below the surface level or that are uh, what's, how do I explain that? That are like caved. So either concave or convex. Okay, so it's raised levels or decreased levels. So anything that strikes you, look at that area and then just kind of think um, about what that would mean. My, again, just to give you another example, the moon area at the bottom right hand corner there of the hand between the Mars and the moon area, mine is really raised. Um, and I really. Um, that's an indicator because um, I am intuitive, I am clairvoyant, I am psychic, um, I work with all these different oracle systems and they inform my psychic ability. And because um, I have that, it's reflected in my hand. So you can test this on yourself. If you look at this, look at your own hand and then it's almost like evidential. You can see how accurate it is by checking your own hand when you look at this. Okay. Right, so I've covered those. You've also got the lines on there. So you've got the lifeline, the head, the heart, um, and what's missing on this diagram is the actual destiny line. So um, your kind of life path, which is next to the lifeline, which goes up usually. Not everyone has one, but it, most people do. So what I'll do is have, I'll... I'll um, have a look at each one of those in depth and separately but I hope this has been useful in terms of just approaching the hand um, when you first look at it just a brief glance at kind of what strikes you and to also ground it with the kind of information about astrology and how the brain actually represents itself in the palm of the hand because that will really inform your readings and it gives you a nice kind of basis to to, to start from. So I hope you find this useful. If you have any questions about palmistry, um, please visit my website, which feel free to um, send me an email. I also do palm readings um, remotely via video or email. I do them in person and I also do them over Skype. So um, if you're interested in having this um, analyzed, then please just get in touch. All the details are on the website um, and I'd be happy to do that for you. So um, yeah, also any feedback or questions would be great. I will be with you again soon and um, hope you're well.